Hello coaches, my name is Dan Morrow and I'm the director for the International Hockey Center of Excellence and I'd like to welcome you to goaltending today. Teaching the skills of goaltending requires a simplified approach that can be combined into your practice plans. With the use of demonstration, explanation and practice drills, this video teaches the most common skills required by the goaltender including movement, anticipation and concentration. This video teaches goaltending based upon the MAC approach. However, coaches, be aware that when playing the position, a goaltender must apply concentration first, followed by anticipation, and finally, movement. Coaches, combine ideas from each of these areas when developing your practice plans. Quick, balanced leg movements allow a goaltender to move efficiently in the ready position. A goaltender in most situations should arrive to make the first save in a standing position and be ready for any rebounds. Movement in goaltending begins with the ready position and includes lateral movement, forward and backward movement, and up and down movement. All movement begins with and must be performed in a balanced ready position. A goaltender will move quicker in this position. The ready position includes the feet comfortably apart with weight slightly towards the front of the skates. The goaltender is in a seated position with the waist slightly bent forward, the chest is upright and the head up. A coach should be able to read the front of the goaltender's sweater in this position. The stick blade in the ready position is on the ice covering the five hole. The distance between the stick and the front of the skates should be enough to allow the stick to absorb the force of the puck emphasize stick on the ice place downward pressure on the blade of the stick while in the ready position a stick on the ice also ensures the blocker is in the ready position when looking straight ahead a goaltender should be able to see the hands using peripheral vision the hands should be away from the body and at the same height for balance playing the puck ahead of the body helps to maintain the ready position and helps focus on the puck in this drill, the coach shoots at a goaltender who must maintain the ready position. A good off-ice activity related to goaltending is table tennis. The stance in table tennis is similar to a goaltender's ready position. Notice the flexed balance position as the player keeps the hands in front of the body and maintains eye contact on the ball. The success of a goaltender is based upon quick, explosive movement, which originates from the ready position. Lateral movement is the most important move for a goaltender and is best accomplished with the shuffle. The shuffle allows a goaltender to maintain the ready position, stay square to the puck, and perform a quick change of direction if necessary. Goaltenders should focus on only the shuffle method when moving laterally. The shuffle is divided into three movements. The short shuffle, half shuffle, and full shuffle. In all lateral movement, the ready position is maintained, which includes the stick on the ice at all times. The goaltender must maintain downward pressure on the blade of the stick. The short shuffle is used when there is a threat of a shot from an opponent in close, with possession of the puck and moving laterally. In the short shuffle, a goaltender must unweight on the lead leg, keep the skates facing the puck, and slide on the inside edge approximately 20 centimeters at a time. The driving leg must extend with power and speed and must recover quickly. A drill to develop the short shuffle is to have shooters moving at half speed. The goaltender will find it easier to concentrate and will be motivated to try these movements. Players skate past the middle of the net and shoot at the five hole. The half shuffle is used when the puck has moved laterally. 
It's similar to the short shuffle, except the lead leg slides a comfortable step to the side. Both legs drive for power and recover quickly. In this drill, the goaltender swivels the head, then uses the half shuffle to square up to the shooter. Swiveling the head locates the shooter. Players must wait for the goaltender to be ready. The full shuffle is used when there is a threat of a lateral pass close to the net. The full shuffle replaces the two pad slide in most cases. Because the full shuffle requires more leg strength and power, it's recommended for ages 13 and older. Young goaltenders will need two or three half shuffles to move the width of the net. This drill allows goaltenders to practice the full shuffle. The goaltender must maintain the ready position as long as possible. Shoulders should remain at the same height. Shooters must try to make the goaltender move as much as possible. Shooters will then exchange positions and try to score. The use of a slide board can assist with development of good lateral movement. To develop strength, have goaltenders handle weights while moving. Notice how the ready position is maintained at all times. In this drill, have goaltenders mirror each other's movements while catching and throwing a puck or tennis ball. Coaches can increase the level of difficulty as the drill progresses. Forward movement to the left or right is performed with the opposite leg. To move forwards to the left side, apply a toe thrust with the right leg. The left leg pad faces straight ahead to provide protection on the short side. The left skate remains on the ice to anchor the body for quick lateral movement. The right leg lifts off the ice and is used to stop and square up for the shot or stop and push backwards. All work is done with the opposite leg. To move forwards to the right side, apply a toe thrust with the left leg. The right pad faces straight ahead while the left leg lifts off the ice and is used to stop and square up for the shot or stop and push backwards. Younger goaltenders may have to apply a two-foot stop until leg strength and balance is developed on one foot. In this figure eight drill, shooters pass and receive on their forehand and their backhand and approach from one side. The goaltender works on forward movement to arrive at a stationary position before the save is made. Shooters will then change sides after three minutes. A goaltender's viewpoint gives a perspective of movement to position for the shot. As a progression, include the passer as a second shooter. The same leg that was used to apply forward movement will be used to apply backward movement. Apply a C-cut striding motion. Remember, with all movement, the goaltender must maintain a ready position, which includes the stick on the ice. Backward movement can be applied from a stationary ready position or following the forward movement. Try where possible to be moving backwards or be stationary when the shot arrives. It's more difficult for the goaltender to react to a shot when moving forward. The next step in this movement progression is to combine forward and backward movement with the shuffle. 
Remember, the opposite leg acts as the power leg for any lateral movement. Key points to remember are stay in the ready position and place downward pressure on the blade of the stick. Here's another drill that helps reinforce movement for the goaltender. In this drill, the goaltender must stay in the ready position and place downward pressure on the stick plate. When going down, keep the chest exposed, head up, and the stick on the ice covering the five hole. Use one leg at a time to return to a ready standing position as soon as possible. Stand up as long as possible on all shots and dekes. Goaltenders may be forced to go down at times, but this video encourages goaltenders to play more of a stand up style. Focus 10 minutes of each practice on movement drills for the goaltender. Stopping the puck is simplified when the goaltender moves quickly in the balanced ready position. Goaltenders must develop the ability to anticipate the offensive attack before moving to make the save. The ability to anticipate determines the boundaries for a goaltender's movement. The rule of thumb for lateral movement is to always move along the center line of the puck. The goaltender's body should intersect an imaginary line running from the puck to the center of the goal line. When using center line of the puck, the goaltender is centered in the net and lateral distance is reduced. When applying center line of the puck, the goaltender swivels the head to locate the center of the net, draws an imaginary line to the puck, becomes centered on the line, and applies the odd even rule. The odd even rule determines forward and backward movement. The odd rule states that if a goaltender anticipates a two on one or three on two, the goaltender should move forward to the middle of the crease only. Movement can then be adjusted based on the opposition's tendencies. For example, teams that use a lateral pass close to the net dictate that a goaltender must play deeper to reduce lateral movement. The even rule is for a two on two or three on three. The goaltender can move to the top of the crease since the offense has fewer options. There should be no threat of a lateral pass. To practice these situations, the following drills simulate game-like conditions for the shooter and the goaltender. Remember, clear objectives must exist for both. This first series of drills simulate a direct attack from in front of the goaltender. Remember, on a direct attack, movement is initiated with the opposite leg. Meaning to move forwards to the left, use the right leg. And to move forwards to the right, use the left leg. In this drill, players must skate laterally past the middle of the net before shooting. Players must wait until the goaltender is ready after each shot. The goaltender must move forward and then laterally with a short shuffle to maintain positioning on the puck. If the coach wants to send shooters in more quickly to build conditioning, have the goaltender stay in the crease at all times, stand up, and move only laterally. This is an important drill because close to 50% of goals are scored within 10 feet of the net when a goaltender doesn't have time to move forward to protect the net. A progression to this drill is to have several players skating with a puck between the red line and the blue line. The coach calls a player's name one at a time. Players skate straight in or laterally for a shot. To make this more game-like, give the goaltender five seconds after each shot before the next player attacks. 
The goaltender can then move laterally or backwards when the shooter approaches. In this last progression, all forwards are skating in one zone. The first coach will indicate ahead of time how many players will attack, either one, two, or three. At the same time, the second coach positions two defense on the blue line and indicates whether one or both will offend. The goaltender must anticipate the odd or even situation and call it a two-on-one or two-on-two according to the situation. This drill series also focuses on a direct attack for the goaltenders. In this first drill, the defenseman skates with a puck to the blue line and passes to a player. The defenseman transition skates and plays a two-on-one. The puck carrier either shoots or passes to a teammate. The goaltender uses the odd rule, swivels the head to stay on the center line with the net and puck, moves forward when the defenseman starts skating, and moves backward with the play. As a progression to this drill, the coach can release an extra defenseman to create a two-on-two. The goaltender swivels the head and uses the even rule, moves forwards when the defenseman starts skating, and moves backwards with the play. In this last series of direct attack drills, the goaltender must be aware of both the defenseman getting involved in the offensive attack and the back checker. The drill begins on the whistle as a defenseman passes to a forward the puck carrier must reach the bottom of the center circle. The defender plays one-on-one. -on -one. The goaltender anticipates the play using the even rule and positions correctly. After a play on net, the coach will blow the whistle to start a second defenseman and forward in the opposite end. The first defenseman must skate up ice to join the second forward in the attack. The first forward back checks. Most situations will evolve as a two-on-two, two, but some will be a two-on-one. The goaltender anticipates an odd or even situation and moves accordingly. On the coach's whistle, the progression continues with the second defenseman joining the attack and the second forward back-checking. These three drill series have emphasized goaltender anticipation in a direct attack situation. The next two drill series will emphasize goaltender anticipation from an indirect attack. An indirect attack usually originates from behind the goal line and is a result of the defense successfully deflecting a direct attack. Remember, the goaltender should always initiate movement with the opposite leg. This first drill starts with a pass out of the corner to a player who shoots. A third player moves into position for a shot, pass, or deflection. The goaltender respects the puck carrier, swivels the head to locate the third player, and moves forward to the right with the left leg. A progression to this drill is to have the first player skate to the hash marks, pass, and then apply pressure. The defenseman reads the pressure and passes off the boards and behind the net to a teammate. The puck carrier passes to the defenseman who shoots. The first player checks the defenseman to the net. The goaltender swivels the head without turning the upper body and moves while remaining in a ready position. Forward movement is initiated with the opposite leg. In this last drill, the puck carrier starts by going behind the net. If A, the defenseman chases, the puck carrier reacts by passing to a player in the low slot. The goaltender must use quick lateral movement to square up to the puck since there is no time to move forwards. If B, the defenseman crosses in front of the net, the puck carrier reacts by walking out the other side and passes to a player in the high slot. Since the pass is high in the slot, the goaltender has time to move forwards.
good anticipation skills ensure the goaltender is in the right place at the right time. Design options in drills that simulate game conditions. This helps to build anticipation skills in all players. Coaches note that an anticipation drill for your forwards and defense automatically becomes an anticipation drill for the goaltender. The goaltender's ability to concentrate or focus sets the stage for effective anticipation and movement skills to take place. One of the best practice fields for peak performance is the mind. Concentration is a learned skill and is the key to success. This section discusses ideas on how to develop good concentration skills during game situations. For many goaltenders, consistent uninterrupted concentration is the most difficult aspect of performance. Concentration is the focusing of a goaltender's attention on cues from the game while completely blanking out non-game related issues. The ability to focus separates the most successful goaltenders from the less successful ones. With today's game more of a transition game, goaltenders are forced to concentrate on the play in all areas of the ice. When the puck is in the offensive zone, the goaltender should keep the mind and body active. Physically rehearse the lateral shuffle and forward and backward movement. Mentally read who is on the ice. Is the opposition sniper or big point shot out? Anticipate the breakout that will lead to an offensive attack. Develop cue words to repeat to yourself such as move, stick pressure. Move forwards for positioning when the puck reaches the far blue line. When the puck is in the neutral zone, the goaltender should anticipate whether the attack will be an even or an odd situation. Develop an image bank of different offensive options for two-on-ones, two-on-twos, and so on. When the puck enters the defensive zone, the goaltender should anticipate shot or pass. Pressure is maintained on the blade of the stick at all times. Self-talk should include head on a swivel and move quick. Disruptive thoughts must be controlled by parking them. Parking these thoughts improves concentration. Successful athletes have been known to see themselves blowing up these thoughts or have them zapped by a laser to stay positive. Stay focused on positive performance rather than on the time or the score of the game. Throughout the season, memorize the tendencies of the most dangerous players. Make notes about each performance after a game. Tendencies for teams and individuals can all be logged for future reference. Concentration is a learned skill that must be applied in all three zones of the ice. When goaltenders focus their thinking, they're better able to anticipate and move to make the save. This video has attempted to simplify the approach to teaching movement, anticipation, and concentration for the goaltender. In short, movement helps the goaltender to arrive in the ready position. Anticipation helps to arrive at the right time. And concentration is the link that ties them together. Teaching goaltending today can and should be incorporated into all practice plans. Good luck, coaches.